Do you want to add Ajax to your pagination? Then stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with BrainTrust Digital. I'm a full stack web developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack web development, please consider subscribing below. In this subscriber requested AWS Rails tutorial, we're gonna walk through how to add Ajax to your pagination. Insightful Talk requested that we show how to navigate via pagination without reloading the page. The way to accomplish this is via Ajax. So in this tutorial, we're gonna build on our Kaminari pagination tutorial to add Ajax functionality. So with that being said, let's get into the tutorial to learn how to add Ajax to pagination. As you can see, we have our application running locally. Let's go ahead and flip to the videos page. Currently, the pagination forces an entire page refresh. As you can see, the, the whole page refresh there as well as the URL parameters get updated. All right, now let's go ahead and flip to our code editor. In my case, that's Sublime Text. The first thing we're going to want to do is update our environments.js file. This is a portion of our Webpacker config. You can find this file in config webpack environment.js. I'll go ahead and paste the updates now and then we can walk through them. Basically what we're doing here is adding an alias for jQuery to the full node module path. This is the best way I figured out how to do this. I've seen several tutorials where they say to place the full node module path in for dollar and jQuery, like so. The problem is this breaks your bootstrap installation. It can be a very frustrating experience, uh, so I prefer not to go that route. Conversely, instead of adding this alias, you could go into your application's JavaScript and require jQuery as long as well as setting the jQuery and dollar variables. I found this to be a bit redundant and it just felt a little cleaner to keep this all tucked away in the environment.js file for me personally. So I'm not gonna go this route. Instead, I'll stick to the alias I've defined. Now that we'll have access to jQuery via the dollar variable, as well as maintaining our Twitter bootstrap JavaScript functionality, let's go ahead and update our views. In app views videos, we're gonna update the index.html.erb file. First, we're going to add an ID around the collection of rendered videos. You can call this whatever you'd like. In my case, I'm going to call it a video or wrap. This will give us something to reference in JavaScript when we want to replace this section in the near future. Similarly, we're going to be wrapping our Kaminari call to paginate videos. In this case, we're just going to add a div with an ID. We're gonna call that pagination wrap. Again, name this whatever you'd like, knowing that you'll need to use this ID later when we reference it in the JavaScript. One last change we need to make in our view is updating Kaminari to know that we're going to use Ajax. This is done by simply calling remote true. This is an option from Kaminari that I'll link to in the description below. Thankfully, Kaminari makes it very easy by offering this remote true option and takes care of all the heavy lifting of, of knowing what our current page is and whether or not we have next or backlinks that should be visible. Now that we have our JavaScript and views in place, we need to update the controller so that it knows how to respond to these Ajax requests. So let's go ahead and open up our app, controllers, videos controller. Here we're only going to change the index action. All we need to do here is add a respond to block. This block will tell Rails how to handle various formats. So when the format is HTML, it's just going to render as it typically would. When the format is JS, we're telling Rails that we want them to render the index.js.erb partial. Let's go ahead and create that now. Rails will expect this to be with all the other views. So we're gonna create this partial in app views videos. Then we're gonna go ahead and create a new file and name it index.js.erb. I'll go ahead and paste the code in now and then we can walk through it. First, you can see we're grabbing the element with the ID videos wrap. We're gonna update the HTML in that element. 
by rendering the collection of videos. As you can see, we're escaping that JavaScript. Next, we're going to grab the element with the ID pagination wrap. And again, we're going to, we're going to make our same pagination call to Kaminari with the videos collection as well as remote true. This is all, of course, inside escape JavaScript. In case you've never used the escape JavaScript tag, this can also be written as a single letter J. And basically this function just escapes carriage returns, single and double quotes for our JavaScript render. One last thing I just noticed is that this file has appended a .rb extension. We're gonna to wanna to rename that to make sure the file name is correct. I think that was my editor just trying to help me out. Fortunately, that's not what I want. So make sure very clear that file is, is named index.js.erb. Now that that's settled, let's go ahead and flip over to the browser and test what we've done. So if we go ahead and refresh this page and then scroll down to the pagination to test our work. We're gonna go ahead and click two to get the second page of content. Okay, as you can see, the pagination worked as we expected it to. Unfortunately, the upper block of content did not change. So let's go ahead and flip back over to our text editor and see if we can figure out what's wrong. I wanted to take a quick second and see if you're finding value here. And if you are, if you consider liking or subscribing or potentially even sharing with a friend who you think may be interested in this type of content, I'd really appreciate it. I'm sitting here with my coworker, Bear, who is napping on the job. And he says, if you do consider subscribing, he will just continue napping. Is that uh, compelling enough? So here we've named the ID video wrap. Let's just make sure that that matches in our index.js.erb. We need to go ahead and remove the S to ensure that this JavaScript code is grabbing the correct element, video wrap. If we go ahead and flip back over to the browser and refresh, then scroll down to the pagination section again and click three, there you go. You can see both the main videos wrap section as well as the pagination have updated as we expect. You'll also note that the URL never changes in the top bar because these are all Ajax requests. As you can see, we can navigate through the pages using the previous and next links, as well as the last and first links, all without changing the URL and just loading everything via Ajax. This is really helpful if you need to have pagination in the middle of a, uh, a Rails application where it's a, a single page and you don't want to refresh like the subscriber insightful talk. Next, let's flip back over to the terminal and commit our code. First, we're gonna go ahead and check out a branch. And we'll call it Ajax Pages. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add our code. Run get status to ensure that all our code is correctly added. Finally, we will commit our code with a message. Next, we'll push our code up to our external repository, GitHub. At this point, as always, if working with a team, this is when you would create a pull request and have your teammate review your code. For the sake of time and my lack of a teammate, as Bear is currently sleeping, I'm gonna go ahead and merge this code myself now and deploy immediately. So we're gonna check out master, and then we're gonna merge our new branch. Finally, we're gonna push this new merged code And then to complete the feature, we can go ahead and deploy with bundle exec cap production deploy. Now that our deploy is finished, let's go ahead and check our production website. Here we've got AWS loaded. Let's go ahead and refresh first. 
then we will navigate to the videos section. We'll scroll down to the pagination area and click three. Then you can see page three's content and pagination has loaded. Here we can continue to click previous, next, last, and first. As you can see, the URL never changes as these pages are all loaded via Ajax. I hope you found this helpful. I really enjoy completing these subscriber requested tutorials, so please remember to leave questions in the comment section below. Getting stuck on various web development tasks can be a real point of frustration. My hope in creating these videos is that I can help you out of that frustration and maybe just lower the barrier to entry into web development a little bit. If you like what you saw here, please don't forget to subscribe. I create videos on full stack web development, primarily focused on ADBS and Ruby on Rails. Please don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And with that, I'll catch you in the next tutorial.